This is another studio vlog from two consecutive weeks and unfortunately because I switched to a new camera I did not figure out all the settings beforehand so most of the clips don't have audio which is kind of sad because I'm not including all of the fun clips that the girls have been joking around in. I started by wearing again that jersey top which you may have seen in the previous studio vlog and I decided to remake it in leather, fake leather which I had lying around since like five years ago so you'll see that a bit later. We just got a feedback, so we're waiting for everyone to get them so that we can look at the coins all together. Mila's feedback got lost. Don't worry, Mila, we heard that everyone passed, so it's fine. Okay, everyone's ready to go. I didn't see. Outstanding. Yeah, what, is sure. that? What, is what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What is it? What is it? I don't know. What is it? What is it? 85. 85. 85. Here are a couple of clips of Marsha's work. Her drawings are just next level. She recently switched to working in jersey materials, as our tutor suggested. Before she tried those very interesting plastic, burnt plastic materials, which look quite cool but are quite a diversion from her concept. So she started reworking the concept from the start, and I feel like it works so well. Just look at the drawings, they're so beautiful. <laughs> we had a first proper lineup in the large drawing studio and it was so helpful to see all the garments in process on the models and try to see how they correlate with each other, see the proportions, play around with them, take one thing from one look and put it on the other one and have a whole group critique your work, it's so helpful. The aftermath of our first lineup, everything is just lying on the floor, pieces hanging everywhere like loosely thrown, Jesus, very neat girls aren't we? Since I organized our university's first clothing swap to be the same studio where we just had a lineup, we had to quickly transform it and flip it to be a beautiful display space. So we put some tables on, we projected videos and had sustainability related links, also exhibited our H&M project from last year and all the clothing which was not swapped, so there was like a few little boxes of clothing we sent away to a charity shop. Может, нам надо было музыку просто поставить, Леонтьева, тогда бы все сбежались. Билана. Про белые розы, желтые тюльпаны, сибирские морозы. Мы просто ее выпустим и все, и включим музыку. А надо было мне микрофон дать? Я бы стояла здесь в центре пела. Нет, я бы рассказывала историю. Ведьмы. Рен ТВ. Масоны. Мой концерт. week I was finally back to the printmaking studio to finish my liner cut piece and also test it out on fabric pieces obviously. Unfortunately, it's kind of out of focus, so bear with me, it's not going to be for long, but I tested out on different pieces of fabric, so it was calico, white denim and white cotton, which I found in the studio, and I do love the outcomes. It's way better than what I had before, so if you remember, if you watched my first studio vlog, I think, I had the same digital print, but it was too clean, and that was the reason for me going to liner copies, and I was kind of joking around with Marsha. We were both in the studio, she was printing, and I was trying to cut my liner copies the first time around, and I was joking, imagine if I have a typo in a liner copies, which 
it will probably take me about eight hours to cut out which it actually did and what do you think i actually have a fucking typo if you look closely instead of other i have on there so i have the, the other with an n inside of it it was so stupid i accidentally typed it in the computer before i transferred the thing to the line of copies it's fine i'm gonna pretend that i wanted it from the start and it's not gonna be a big problem because my concept kind of has a leeway for me to play around with words and play around with making it kind of funny and jokey so well i'm just gonna have to print a layer of like crossing out the end but it's just so ironic that i thought about it and actually happened for one of the samples that I'm still using from semester 8 with the print, I used a scanner to distort it, so I decided to use the same technique with these prints that I just made on a liner cut. And once our textile printer starts working again, which it hasn't been for the past three weeks, <clears throat> which is kind of fucking terrible because everyone is working with printer, I'm gonna be printing those out and testing them on fabrics because I love how they turned out. For the actual liner cut piece, I love how it changed colour because I was using blue ink and I, despite my best efforts, it kind of stained the thing anyways. I love how it looks because it does resemble the actual stamp once it's been used a couple of times. I was thinking of using this actual piece to make a backpack out of it because I feel like it would be very interesting to have this option for you to dip your backpack or your bag or anything uh, into colour and be able to make an actual print so that this idea will kind of still be in rotation with the collection. I think that this kind of patchwork effect is going to look very interesting especially having the same print just transferring from one material to the other and also if I flap it around and insert like paper or pot Possible pages inside of that flap it could be very interesting like a possible cover with the pages coming out from it because these tests kind of birth a new color palette for me I think that this could be a very beautiful patchwork if I tried to recreate it again and because I was so focused on making that bodycon pleated thing which didn't quite work I feel like if I work in these colors with these prints and try to make like a middle ground between the very engineered and very soft version of that jersey it could look very beautiful especially with the prints in those colors and kind of keeping it loose and raw so that's probably what I'm going to be focusing on a bit later on as well. Таня уже все сняли, пока ты там свои волосы распускала. With jasmine flowers and there were like only two left, one not really good and the one like perfect. perfect. And he looked at me with like that eyes gave me this flower and then he disappeared. <laughs> <gasps> I think Pink Cushions and I have a bit of a feud. The first one I lost, so I had to make a second one. I lost the second one in Sony as I thought. Then I made the third one and the third one kind of broke on me. It got too stretched out so it was impossible to wear. I got frustrated every time so I decided to make a new one. So here you see me making a new one out of scraps of fabrics which we have in our studio. The large box of fabrics is a scrap box of level 5 fabrics which we've gone through and filtered out with ginormous pieces like the 2 meter long pieces of clean perfect fabric which I'm gonna rant on in like future videos because that's just not acceptable but alas I made a new pincushion yay I hope I don't lose this one exactly know what Anna was saying here because I lost the fucking audio but alas I think she was saying that she feels old and that her back is hurting and that she feels 50 years older than she actually is. And this is my makeup and my hair of the week. Don't know what I'm showing it to you but maybe you're interested, don't know. I decided to test different options of creasing the fabric on fusing because I was interested in looking to the opposite side of fused fabric which is creased because I like the kind of ghostly effect of traces of memories of those creases so I tested different pieces of fabric which I found in my studio. Some tests worked better than others but none of those felt perfect. I feel like I have to find a different fusing which has wider netting and also the one I tested before looked very beautiful because it was in very thick white jersey so I'm gonna have to recreate this effect Effect, I guess because the ones I tested out are only visible on black. It can be fixed if I make a black interlining to the jacket and I'm making out of this fabric but I don't want it to be very restricting to what person has to wear underneath to see the effect so I'm gonna have to play around with it a bit more. Because we were very interested in hanging our stuff in process as the other side of the table is able to do because the pole is lowered we asked the our side of the pole to be lowered as well not too much not exactly the same as the other side so that we could still walk underneath to go to the side machines without walking around them but still enough for us to climb with a chair maybe.
Despite the fact that I did not find the best um, fabrication combo to make the jacket out of, I decided to make it out of the one that worked the best that I had available. And um, for the Wednesday lineup, I just wanted to show my tutor and my groupmates what I was working on, so I could show them a little sample of that fabric in my sketchbook so that they would know what it would actually look like in the final version. We decided to take this piece from the dramatic kind of abstract trousers and I decided to play around with it on the body because even in my first sketchbook, I really wanted it to be like a backpack idea. So I I decided to play around with it here. Here I'm super sad that there's no audio video, but I'm gonna link that YouTube video down below because this guy, his personality is just impeccable. And finally, we had our astrologist Tiana come in with tarot cards and read our fortunes. We are super blessed with the studio because it has a lot of natural sunlight, but at least in Milan, I'm not super happy about it because they sit on the side that gets hit with the sun the most while we're working in the studio, so it gets very hot very quickly. Because I'm still on the journey of rediscovering my prints and samples and making new ones because I hated all the previous ones after the Christmas break, I decided to start playing around with impressions because I wanted to look deeper into that right from the start. And I made a little paperclip impression underneath the hot press on fake leather pieces which I had lying around the studio from like a few years ago. So I love the outcome, I feel like it looks amazing but I was curious about how that would perform on real leather because I was not about to buy any fake leather and fabric. I bought a second hand coat from Avita which is genuine leather it cost me just 500 it was so long everyone was so in love with it because it was kind of tailored to my body it looked amazing and Tatiana was super crazy about me cutting into it and just wearing but it's not my style I know I'm not gonna be wearing it so I'm just gonna be giving it a new life by reintroducing this amazing genuine leather into my project <laughs> Buttons as well I feel like could work in my project and if they don't work in here Alisa was excited about them she felt like they are very beautiful so if I don't use them I'm pretty sure she's gonna be happy to use them later in her project. This was Tanya modeling one of Hong's dolls. I tested the paperclip impressions on real leather and I love the outcome, I feel like it looks great but something interesting happened along the way. So the impressions of paperclips were also doubled on the fabric that I was covering it up with because the leather itself was treated in colour and it left a bit of residue avoiding the paperclip area so I decided to play around with this and actually not cover it up with cheap calico but cover it up with white cotton to see what impression it would make on the fabric. And it did leave kind of interesting ghostly very subtle effect which i could implement in the project in like finishing or seams or interlining so i am definitely going to be looking into it later on as i mentioned in the beginning i just can't leave that top alone for some reason it did not work in pleated calico it did not work in soft drapey jersey and i just decided to play around with it for the last time and test it in fake leather i loved absolutely loved how it looked on a mannequin and on the body it just looks hideous and then i have the opposite problems my stuff usually looks good on the mannequin and not so great on the body before i finish and perfect it obviously but her stuff does the opposite so she claims that her stuff does not look great on the hanger on the mannequin but on the body does look good. I think we should both find a middle ground to be happy, I think, for once. Since it's our last year as a group, we we're trying to spend as much of our free time together as possible, so we had a little lunch at the Fruits and Veggies vegan cafe together. Alisa made a market bag out of her plastic pieces melted together, so it was kind of funny to see how she played around with it. On our previous lineup, Anna was suggested to remake her existing coat in a cheaper wool and make it a bit longer so that it could be cut on the lineup. And here we should insert like a meme from Antwerp and meme page because it's just so true and so painful to see your 12 being cut. I sincerely hope this does not happen because if that garment gets cut to approximately like 15 centimeters longer than her first wall, it's just going to be so painful to watch and especially painful for her because even the cheap wool is not that cheap. 
But yeah, that's it. I'm obviously going to be filming a lot more, so subscribe if you're interested to see the behind the scenes of fashion and collections of elephants. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Bye.